So in between all the mess that our hell world has been giving us over the past few weeks from drama with black celebrities, football players, the Manosphere, and everyone's favorite former child actor, one of the biggest trending topics on the low was a well-known yet obscure social media influencer named Peaches McIntyre, I think. I do not know why I know about this woman and her life. I blame my wife. I be in my bed playing video games and then all of a sudden I hear, that lady got seven kids and she divorcing her husband. That lady divorcing her husband and she got seven kids. That lady divorcing her husband and she got seven kids. That lady divorcing her husband and she got seven kids. If you don't know who Peaches McIntyre is, congratulations. That's very much normal and consider yourself lucky. Peaches is a genre of influencer that I'ma call car crash lifestyle content. While most lifestyle content creators have an appeal of like a posh and aspirational yet very materialistic lifestyle where they're, you know, fashionable, they get high-end sponsors, promote products, etc. Car crash influencers seem to be regular people documenting their regular lives, often with a significant insight on their personal dysfunction and a little bit of voyeurism into poverty and struggle life. That is somewhat exploitative, but since it's them doing it to themselves, I, I don't know, but it's definitely dramatic and bizarre and hard to look away. Peaches in particular has a well-documented gambling problem, as does her on-again, off-again husband, and as she mentioned, seven kids. And she comes off as a woman in dire need of therapy who needs to turn off her camera. She spent most of the last month arguing with her extended family, many of which also have a lot of trauma and also have social media platforms. And it was basically like witnessing a large family argument, except on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. It was all about this person isn't even this person's real child and this person abused this person and this person be stealing money and is neglectful and just a whole bunch of stuff that I really wish wasn't on the internet for everyone to see. So my mom tried to do this story hoping to ruin me. Everybody's saying, oh, I hate Peach McIntyre. How could she let people attack her mama? You say, I know it's a video out there. Baby, in that video, them people did not attack you. You beat them girls ass. But the irony is that her dysfunction is a key ingredient to her success as a creator. And I think she knows this. If you go to any one of her comment sections, you'll see that there are just as many people hate watching and criticizing her behavior as there are following her to support her. These viewers tell her she needs help, tell her she's traumatizing her children and call her out on her farming her family's trauma for content. But it's ironic because their participation in the content cycle reinforces Peach's behavior. They are a part of the problem they are complaining about because they're falling for what's called rage farming or rage bait. Rage bait is a type of content that is super popular on social media because it's incredibly easy to do, reliable, and if done well, lucrative. Simply think of something that pisses people off, make a video or article or meme about it, drop it in the algorithm and wait for clicks and comments to roll in. And I really, really hate it. And I think it's destroying the world. Rage bait is everywhere. It's the reason why the Manosphere exists, both the actual Manosphere and his believers, but also Manosphere haters like myself contribute to the problem. It's the reason why true crime is such a lucrative genre of media, despite being really awful. It's the reason why Jada Pinkett was in the headlines last week. It's the reason why this girl did this ridiculous cheesecake factory stunt that was everywhere the last couple of weeks so she could promote her podcast. It's the reason why January 6th happened because all these people that ran up into the government building spent years locked inside during COVID watching conspiracy theory videos about Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton eating babies in dungeons built under pizza restaurants. Yes, that is real. Most commentary channels thrive off making rage bait commentary or reaction videos. And I try not to judge, but maybe something like the ukulele woman was worth a large noob cycle because it was so bizarre and she was a former YouTuber. But for me, if you couldn't tell that the Cheesecake Factory lady was doing all that nonsense for clout and clicks, I don't know if I want to hear your opinion about pretty much anything else ever. The problem with rage bait is that we are its fuel and we can't seem to reject it even when we know what it's doing. Why is that? 
Why do so many people uncritically fall for rage bait and allow it to consume their time and energy without realizing they're being manipulated? And why do some people knowingly consume rage farming content even when they know that it's being made cynically for the sake of engagement, but they can't manage to look away? Lastly, and most importantly, what can we do about it? I am not an expert on psychology, but I've read enough to know that there's something about outrage that is hardwired into us as a human species. There's been countless studies that show that people will spend more time engaged with things that that disgust them than things that bring them joy. I call it car crash content because it makes me think of how people will naturally slow down on the street or the highway whenever they drive past a car crash. I can't call it, but it's an urge that a lot of us have, but still that only explains half of the problem. The biggest factor of rage bait is that it relies on breaking certain social mores and rules. Some rage bait like Britney Spears dancing with knives on Instagram is basically born out of morbid curiosity and possibly a serious issue with Britney Spears mental health. So we watch that because we just wonder what happened to Britney Spears because we're familiar with Britney Spears and you know, that makes some sense. But other rage bait is this insidious tradition of manufacturing moral consent and drama farming through outrage from people that break these moral consensual contracts. Going back to that Cheesecake Factory lady, she is smart. She knows exactly the type of misogynistic, lowbrow thinkers who spend the most time on the internet leaving mean comments whenever they see a woman that pisses them off, which is for these dudes, pretty much all women. So she knew that if she did this ridiculous skit that the worst people on the internet, men and women alike, would all sprint to her comment section to say their piece, she goes viral and, oh, by the way, she has a podcast. She knows that the idea of a woman being entitled or ungrateful is exactly the type of thing that activates the rage centers of some of these underdeveloped prefrontal cortexes. The same thing is happening with Jada Pinkett, Doja Cat, Sexy Red. It's different levels, of course, but it greatly comes down to policing people to make sure they're not acting in the way they're not supposed to act. Like, I don't like Karens any more than the next person, right? But it is weird how that became a thing while Donald Trump was president. It feels like certain people get to act with near impunity while others better be on their best behavior or they're gonna get drug on the internet. Not to say that the Karens don't need to get drug, but you have to start noticing how the economy for this stuff works. Even with folks with more traditionally marginalized statuses, people like Candace Owens or Christian Walker greatly got their platforms by manufacturing outrage and saying inflammatory and ridiculous things things for attention. Because you're pandering, right? You're pandering. You look at Cardi B's Instagram, you see she has millions of followers and you think, okay, this is an illiterate person. And if I if I appeal to this illiterate person and she does a like she literally did uh, uh, in the middle of this interview, and they think she's cool, she's hip just by sitting here and, and taking this interview, black people will vote for me. It's basically saying, black people, you are stupid. As a black woman and for Christian in particular, as a gay black man, they're not supposed to willfully try to harm people who have the same plight as they do. But they do. That's all they do, really. And in doing so, they receive tons of backlash, and this ironically rewards their behavior. The big groove guy, the big, hmm, the large dancing black man knows he's too damn big to be dancing like this. He knows that being in this large black male body, people are going to be bothered by what he's doing. He knows that playing to certain stereotypes about black men is wrong. He's not stupid, but he knows you'll watch regardless and keep reposting his shit like, like, look at this. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Watch, watch it again. Ooh, let me share it for other people. Watch, watch, look at how bad this is. Look at it. In a perfect world, people will be rewarded for actual talent, creativity, curiosity, etc. But I don't know. I, maybe we don't even deserve that shit. We deserve the girl that licked toilet seats during COVID. That is what we've earned as a society. It is what it is. So what do we do? This may surprise some of you, but I don't have a great answer. Like less than usual, do I have a good answer? Which I know makes some of you angry. Usually I'll just be saying I don't know the answer, but I definitely know what I think should be done. But it's the type of shit I'm not gonna say in public. But in this situation, I don't know because we're dealing with a new phenomenon. You have to remember that social media is basically like 10 years old in the state that exists now. 
Facebook and MySpace did exist in the mid 2000s, but it wasn't until the 2010s when the infinite scroll was created. And a lot of these companies started using big data programs and algorithms to make and guide users to their content. And so I think few people using social media seem fully aware of how altered a reality you're seeing when you open up your favorite social media app. If you think about it, it took decades for people to fully understand that what they were watching on TV was fake and not a true representation of the world. And even now, a lot of people still clearly don't fully understand that. So it might be a while before we get to social media having the same understanding at a general baseline in the population. To me, the best thing you could do is spread more awareness of how algorithms work and shape what we consume and maybe do it with a little less judgment than I did in this video because a brother was maybe venting a little bit. But bottom line, we have to raise our level of media literacy. And that just so happens to be something that is a key element to today's sponsor, Ground News. I don't ever take sponsors that I don't genuinely feel might provide value to y'all or that I wouldn't or haven't used myself. But Ground News is definitely at the top of the list of things that I'm like, okay, I really think people can benefit from this. For example, let's take this story about a hate crime that happened in Florida. One of the best things about Ground News is that they have a built-in research program that gives you a research-based indication of the political slant of every new source and every new story that might come from that source. In this case, it tells us that this story tends to be more centrist with a score of 82%, meaning that it's a story that everyone is reporting going from Fox News to the Associated Press. Ground News does the work of giving you multiple versions of the same story so that you can get a direct look at how different agendas will talk about the same story, or at least present it in this case. And it's pretty interesting to see how these agendas change the way that stories are discussed or presented. Like for example, everyone uses the meme of the eponymous Florida man in their headline, and they point out that he tried to run over six black men. Cool, but then you see this one version of the story that adds the important details of the headline that it happened at the site of the Rosewood massacre. And if you're like me, that changes your interest and understanding of the story because now I realize we're not just talking about a hate crime, we're talking about a hate crime at the site of one of America's most notorious acts of white terrorism. So a hate crime, about a hate crime. Then of course there's Fox News who decided adding the extra detail that the crime was committed in a pickup truck was important for some reason. I honestly don't know. I, I imagine they added that detail to create further distance between that person's action and themselves. I, I can't get it. I don't quite understand, but either way, they thought it was important to their audience and it's something that you get to see. And what this does is that it shows you how the framing of a story might do so much to color what your thoughts on it are before you even read it. And that's really why I rock with Ground News because they're the type of resource that we legit need more of in our modern media landscape. They're an impartial independent media entity that is not algorithm driven, meaning that it's not designed to bubble you into one specific way of consuming information or viewing the world. Instead, it's the opposite. It gives you a bird's eye view of all the bubbles at once so you can be more effectively informed on what's really going on. An example of how they do that is through their blind spot feature. This feature tracks whether or not a particular story is being presented on various news sources and bringing to you which stories that are being underreported on left or right leaning sites, presenting them to you to get the bigger picture. Like for example, here's a story that surprised me about Joe Biden actually standing up to big oil in Alaska. Color me shocked. I genuinely think that Ground News is a good tool for at least starting the process of creating a more informed user base in these internet streets. They provide all the tools you need to be a critical thinker. And because they're so confident in the value of their services, they're allowing me to offer you 30% off on their Vantage subscription. You can only access this discount through my link. So go to groundnews.fd or click the link in the video description to support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent. I want to say thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Thank all of you for watching. I'm FD Signifier, and this has been Lightwork.